Good morning, guys. Thanks for sticking up with me. I've been sick the past few days. Gatsby's doing fine, though. Yeah? Let's start the day. Hey guys, I'm driving off right now to watch Interstellar again. <laughs> My friend Vito didn't see it, so he's like, I want to see it. And I was like, I can watch it again. The first time I saw it, I just saw it on regular film. This time, one of the benefits of living in the Bay Area, they have it on 70 millimeter IMAX, the way that it was filmed. It's supposed to be like the highest of high quality. I'm actually driving kind of far to get to it. This is the only place we can go and we're going kind of early to watch it. Although I saw it already, I was like, I need to see it the way that it was meant to be seen. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, I made it. Look how big that theater is. Huge. Look how big the screen is. It's about six stories, I'd say. Right? And if you count like the doorway, I was like counting. Yeah. We finished it. Vito loved it. I liked it a lot more the second time watching it. Gatsby looks like he's ready to go. Are you ready to go to the park? He? Hi. Gatsby and his frisbee. Woo! Look at that frisbee go. Here it goes. Yeah. We've been coming to the park a little bit earlier nowadays just because it's been getting so dark so early. I don't even know what I'm gonna do. I can walk him at night, but I can't bring him to the park, especially since there's no lights here. For right now, we're coming a little bit earlier and doing stuff during the daytime. Only problem is there's no doggies. Look, the park is totally empty. That means I have to do extra work. dog in the world. Gatsby, sir. Ah! Okay, let's make a green smoothie. I haven't made those in a while. We have some grapes, kale, lemons, ginger, pears, apple, a cucumber over here. Okay, so I just dipped off the kale. Down. Good dog. Oh, down. Good dog. <laughs> Tons of grapes. Here's the lemon juice. Cucumbers, I'm gonna do the apple next. Finally, the pear and the ginger and ice and water. You already finished this kale stick. Another one, sit. There you go. Ended up adding two pears and some ginger here. Whenever I make green smoothies, it's usually because I have all this fruit and vegetables and I'm like, I'm not gonna have any time to eat all of this. Just stick it inside of the green smoothie here. Okay, just need some water and some ice now and we'll be ready to go. Cheers. Mmm, that tastes really good. <laughs> Remember this? This is where we used to play all the time. Gatsby, when you were a baby, when we first got you here. And then we would, we would just lay here. Like this. Still love the camera. Stay. Hey, cool corgi. Ha <laughs> ha! Just got out of the shower. For dinner today, we have some meat sauce spaghetti. So we got some linguine here, I have some ground beef, and some spaghetti sauce here. Mom's pasta sauce. So we're gonna make it. I'm boiling the water for the pasta noodles. I'm gonna do the ground beef here first. We just gotta break it up. Okay, it's browning slowly. This is still not boiling. Okay, this is all done. So next, time to add the pasta sauce. I reduced the heat to add the sauce. This looks pretty good. Mmm. Look at all that garlic in there. Wow. Mom's all natural pasta, thank you. And super basil-y too. The sauce is nicely simmering here. Time to add the linguine here. Okay, it's al dente, I just tasted it. Time to drain the noodles. Here we go. Pasta noodles, add the sauce. Ah, oh, look at that, so much meat in here. Anyway, there's my pasta, and here's the leftovers safe for tomorrow. Cheese, there we go, dinner time. Whoo! 
so I thought I would finally rehash what I thought about the movie Interstellar. The movie is directed by Chris Nolan, oh, a la Inception, The Dark Knight, Memento, or The Prestige. But the first time I saw the movie, I just liked it, but the second time I saw it, I really, really, really did like it a lot. And I have to say that it's going to be incredibly difficult to discuss the movie without spoiling it because the whole movie is pretty much a spoiler. I'll try my best to provide a spoiler-free version. I was able to watch it once in regular theaters and once in 70 millimeter. IMAX. The film reel weighs 600 pounds and took 46 reels and takes two people to keep switching between it. So it was like incredible and it costs a lot of money to watch the movie this way. But I thought that it was definitely the way to watch it. It's a movie that requires a lot of thinking. It's not very mainstream. I thought it was very, very well thought out. It's so hard to review this movie without giving it away. I can give you the setting and set it up. Sometime in the future, I would say at least 40 years in the future, there's a lot of references such as the old grandpa says, back in my day, we used to like focus on like the newest, latest technology and latest gadgets. The earth has decided to not provide food anymore. All the dirt has turned into sand. Basically, human beings are on the brink of extinction. There's no more food on Earth. So what the movie is about is Matthew McConaughey leads a team into space to try to find a new viable planet to call home. I think that the main theme of the movie is about not giving up hope. Even if you face death, never give up. That's about all I can say without ruining everything. How about this? I'm going to put a spoiler version of this at the end of the vlog after the credits. If you are someone who has seen the movie, wait until after the credits and I will discuss the rest of the movie for you. So my final review for Interstellar out of four stars would have to be three and a half. I really, really liked it. I did have a few problems though with the movie. Anyway, the other movie that I saw, The Fault in Our Stars. The way that they wrote Ansel Elgort's character, I was like, nobody in the world exists like this, who's like so perfect in every single way. It's just like how they wrote Robert Pattinson in Twilight, where all the girls just fell in love with him. Anyway, totally ignoring that though, I did feel like very incredibly emotionally manipulated, but I didn't care. I was still like, I like watching this, I really enjoy watching the movie. The performances in The Fall of the Night Star is incredible. It was great. I think that, that's what made the movie so great is Shailene Woodley and Ansel Elgort. If they weren't in it, if it was someone else, I don't think that the movie would be as great. And so my final review for The Fault in Our Stars out of four stars would be three stars. It was good. Anyway, if you saw either of those movies, put it down in the comments below and let me know what your score is. Abby's the D-boy who infiltrated all the corporate dudes. They call shots, I call audibles. Jacob the jeweler, bubbles, Lorraine Schwartz ought to do. It's big ballin' baby when I'm courting you. I'm fucking spy bags that fly past them. Rooms at the Bloomberg and rumors you on the verge of a new merge. Cause that rock on your fingers like a tumor. You can't fit your hand in your new- Thanks for sticking to the end of the video. Here's my spoiler version with the analysis. Initially, when I saw the movie, I was like, this is so lame. Like, he uses gravity to communicate. And when she's like, oh yeah, gravity is the only thing that can transcend time. Which I was like, that's kind of lame. There's a lot of things that can transcend time. Like, why don't they communicate through photosynthesis then? But then when I was thinking about it, actually what Nolan was trying to say was that gravity doesn't only transcend time, but in a sense, Time relies on gravity, as evidenced in the scenes when he goes to all the different planets. They're like, oh, time runs slower because the gravity is stronger over here. It turns out that gravity actually is the main being beyond time. I was like, that is actually a pretty cool concept. When I was thinking about it, I was like, there isn't anything, I guess, that gravity relies on that we know of right now. But then I was thinking, at the end of the movie when he's communicating with his daughter through gravity, whenever he like decides to change gravity, it should be reflected across all the timelines because gravity is not relying on time. So for example, if he changes the gravity right now, it would change it for all the timelines at the same time. So all the different versions of Mirth should feel that gravity change. So I was kind of thinking, what would that be like in the movie? It seemed like he was just traveling along a timeline. He was like, okay, I'm gonna change the gravity for this time, which I, I don't think that would work. It's either you can turn it on or off. And at the same time, if he changed the gravity, I wonder what happens to time. I feel like the movie did have a lot of similarities to the book, The Heart of Darkness. The character in The Heart of Darkness 
travels from place to place and observes what has happened. And one of the characters, Seneca Crane from The Hunger Games, even mentions we're going into the heart of darkness. So that's why I was like, I think that there is a connection there. Anyway, so I really like Chris Nolan movies because you can watch it over and over and over again and always pick up something different.